So what I'm going to do is write some pseudocode for merge sort and gradually refine it as we go. So in this first version, we have the array we want to sort, and then we're going to sort everything between some start index and some end index within the array. Now, we will only sort the array if the start index is actually less than the end index. Because we said earlier that an array, or rather a subarray with only one element, is actually already sorted. But from here, we need to know how to split up the array. So we'll have a calculation that gives us the midpoint. And we'll assume we have some uh, method or function that provides the midpoint between start and end. And then what we'll do here is we will, um, this is where I'm going to use pseudocode and then refine it later. We'll merge sort the left half of the array. And then we will merge sort the right half of the array. And because merge sort will sort the subarray that is defined by start and end, we know we have a sorted left half and a sorted right half. And therefore, we can merge the left and right halves. And then that is it, <laughs> except that's a bit too good to be true. Um, we have to fill in some details here. So first, Let's get specific about what it means by a left and right half. So the left half of the array is going to be the subarray from the start index up to mid, this midpoint. Now, there are some slight variations you could do here. Um, basically, like whether or not it's start to mid or start to mid minus one. It depends on your convention. And as long as you're consistent everywhere, it'll work. Um, so for the right half, I'm going to merge sort the array from mid plus one up to end. And so my convention here is that the indices start and end are inclusive. So when you initially call this merge sort, um, end would be the last index of the array, not the length of it. And from here, we're going from start to the midpoint. That's inclusive. And therefore, the next one has to start at midpoint plus one so that it is a, a different index. We don't have any overlap. We don't want any overlap in these arrays. Now, how do we handle this merge operation? Basically, we'll assume that a merge method or function exists um, that will merge this array for everywhere from the start to the mid to the end. So we're sort of implicitly saying that we're going to merge from start to mid and then from mid plus one to end in this procedure. Now, how are we going to do this? Basically, we have to loop through the array, but keep moving up an index for each of the subregions. So these are the starting indexes of each subregion. We'll loop as long as either of the two indices are in bounds. So left will go up to mid and right will go up to end. And at each step of the way, we have to compare the values at these indices. Now, the question is, what do I do in each of these cases? I want to copy from the left subarray whenever that left value is less than or equal to the value on the right. But where will I put that? And that's where we realize we need some extra storage. So typically, the way that merge and therefore merge sort is implemented 
is with an auxiliary storage array. So this is a temporary array. Now, the assumption here is that we will initialize this array at the beginning and then reuse it over and over again so that we're not constantly wasting time allocating array storage space. Now, technically, we're also going to have to add temp to our merge sort code like so. So here. But also here, here, and here. We have to carry it around with us the whole time. But now, going back to the code for merge, we can simply put the smaller value into temp. Now the question is, where do we put it? Well, we have to have another index tracking the location in temp that we're adding an element to. I'll just call that i and initialize it right here. So i will be initialized to start the same way that left is. But when we find that the left element's less than the right element, we will say that temp i is equal to array left. Now, because left was the smaller one and we use that value, that means left has to increase. So I'm actually going to increment left and I also have to increment i. Now, these increments could be separate commands, but I'm going to use the C, C++, Java syntax of a post increment to increment these variables. So those values are incremented after I assign the value from array index left to temp index i. And in this case, I will put a value into index i and then increase index i, but the value will come from array right. So I figure out the original value that was in the array, I put it into temp and index i, and then I increment those values. So this will give us a situation where until one of these reaches the end of its subarray, we copy elements over. But we're not done yet because this while loop stops as soon as one of these reaches the end. That means we still have some elements left to copy. We can copy any remaining elements from the left, then we copy any remaining elements from the right. Note that only one of these two halves will have remaining elements. But if we implement these with loops, one of the loops will just fail immediately because it's done, and then the other loop will copy all the remaining elements. What do we do at the end? We copy all the elements from the temp array back to the original array. Now I said all the elements, but really we only copy the relevant elements. So we've only been messing with elements in the range from start to end. And so those are the ones we're gonna copy from temp back to the array. And then once we've done that, we're done. That is the complicated aspect of merge sort. But the elegant side of merge sort is right here, where we have this nice recursive algorithm that calculates a midpoint. It merge sorts the left half of the array, merge sorts the right half of the array, and then merges the two sorted halves. And so this is the core. One last little thing I'll point out is that while we're doing this merge operation, we could have arrays with duplicate values. So that zero would go here, this one would go here, and then because of you know these elements being next to each other, we would just keep copying the two and the two, and then we'd copy the threes from here and here, and then these fours, and then these fives. Now, when we're dealing with numbers like this, all numbers that have the same value are seen as the same number. 
But remember that we're often sorting things that are not simply numbers. Sometimes we're sorting a very complex object where a certain number tells us how to sort the objects, but the actual contents of the objects may differ in the details. And because of that, it may matter what order elements that seem to have the same value are in. So let's say that each of these numbers is associated with some sort of string, like this one with hello, and this one with bye. You could easily imagine some sort of structure, record, or object class data type that contain both a number and a string. And you could define your sorting order to be based on the number, but to ignore the string. So what's the relevance of this? Well, if this was the original order of elements in the combined array before they were split and merged, um, notice that this merge operation maintains those elements in the same order they were in the original array. So if hello came before by in the original array, then that ordering would be maintained, even though we're shuffling things up a bit by sorting them. Because in the sorted array, overall, elements are not in the same order. However, the elements that have the same value, or what we call a sort key, those will still be in the same order with respect to each other. And that means that merge sort is an example of a stable sorting algorithm. This is not always true, and it is one of the benefits of merge sort.